Hey there folks, Uncle Troy here. Today we're playing a game I like to call I Am Not A Blank. And that's where one of my nephews asked me a question that I am not qualified to answer. You know, because I am not, say, a lawyer, I am not a doctor, I am not someone traditionally thought of as someone who knows how to answer a question in those specific fields. But even though I'm not qualified, I still feel obligated to try to answer anyway. You see, my nephews look up to me, they think I know things, and I don't want to disappoint them. So, in spite of the fact that I'm not qualified to answer the question, I'll answer the question anyway. Here's an example. Okay, so recently one of my nephews asked me, Uncle Troy, you said there were nine planets, but according to my teacher, there's only eight. You know, you keep talking about this planet called Pluto, which my teacher says isn't a planet. Why do you think Pluto is the ninth planet? And, uh, well, time marches on. Science marches on. And so things change. And even though I'm not a planetary uh, scientist, I'm not an astronomer, uh, I think I can try to explain a little how this works. Uh, when I was growing up, they taught us this thing to remember the nine planets. And back then there were nine planets. And it was something like, my very eager mother just served us nine pizzas. Nine planets. And that was so we could remember the names of the nine planets, which was started with the same letters as, my very eager mother just served us nine pizzas. And in my family, by the way, serving nine pizzas wouldn't be considered eager. It would be considered uh, estimate of how much three teenagers and a husband who just worked like a 16-hour shift with nothing but like a cheese sandwich and an apple uh, could eat in one sitting, which would be about nine pizzas. Anyway, so those, uh, those nine letters, my very eager mother just served us nine pizzas, stood for the nine planets, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. Ah, I knew I'd remember them eventually. Uh, and to really understand Pluto, you have to go through all the planets one by one. So we're going to start with Mercury. Mercury was the closest planet to the sun, orbiting in real close. And uh, that's going to be my little convention for this video. Uh, rather than try to find some actual uh, images of the planets or try to draw some, uh, we're just going to pretend like my face is the sun, and these, this here describes the orbit of the planets around the sun, and this here describes the uh, rotation of the planets. So, okay. So Mercury, real close to the sun. And, in fact, at one point I was taught that Mercury rotates around the sun and is tidally locked, meaning that the same face always faces the sun. So... Instead of doing this while it was rotating around, it was doing this. It was keeping the, the same face toward the sun. Uh, later, I think, they found out that it actually rotates, but very slowly. And in fact, it takes less time to go around the sun than it does to make one rotation. So Mercury's day is longer than its year, I think, is what they taught. And if that's not true about Mercury, it's true about some planet I read. I mean, I know it didn't make that up. I actually read it somewhere. Now, the next planet out, orbiting not quite so close to the sun, was Venus. And for a long time there, they called Venus the sister planet of the Earth because Venus was about the same size as the Earth. And it was thought that underneath all that cloud cover was a planet very much like Earth. In fact, one theory about the cloud cover was that there was this big, thick, huge jungle. And uh, that's what made all the water vapor, which made all the clouds. So basically, the entire uh, planet of Venus was supposed to be like the Amazon rainforest. And it was thought that the thick, thick clouds reflected a lot of the light uh, coming from the sun. So even though Venus was closer to the sun than the Earth was, it would be about the same temperature. Like I said, that's what they used to teach us back in school. This is a long time ago. Now, since then, we've determined that Venus has a very thick atmosphere, a poisonous atmosphere, and it is very, very hot. So if you was to try to, say, sand on the surface of Venus, it would be a, a race to see which would kill you first. Would it be the pressure? Would it be the heat? Or would it, would it be the poisonous atmosphere? Uh, my vote's on the atmosphere, the poisonous atmosphere, but... 
you know, I'm not a scientist, so I'm not really qualified to judge. Now, the third planet from the sun, uh, orbiting a little further out, is the Earth. And if you need to know about, more about the Earth, I'd say pause this video, get off your butt, go outside and walk around for a while. That'll teach you everything you need to know about the Earth. Now, the next planet out is Mars, just a little bit further out than the Earth. And Mars has also been called the sister planet of Earth, uh, not because it's about the same size, but because of all the planets in the solar system, it turns out Mars is closest to ours in terms of temperatures and the possibility of life, or at least life as we know it. You see, Mars, uh, it, Mars is colder than the Earth. It's farther away, and it doesn't have a whole lot of atmosphere to hold in the heat, but the coldest parts of Mars aren't that much colder than the coldest parts of the Earth. And the warmest parts of Mars are, well, they're nowhere near the warmest parts of Earth, mind you, but they do get up above freezing, above the freezing point of water. So unlike, say, Mercury or Venus, where it is so hot you would, you know, you're going to die instantly, uh, you can survive on Mars temperature-wise pretty easily. Now, Mars is also thought to have some water vapor uh, in the atmosphere and some water trapped in the, uh, in the Earth, or in, not in the Earth, but in the dirt of Mars. So it's, you know, one of the few places in the solar system we know have water. So, and the, uh, what was it? Oh, yeah, the lack of atmosphere on Mars actually makes it easier to terraform. If we could just find a hardy enough plant, say a tree that can survive a near vacuum, and can uh, process carbon dioxide into oxygen, plant that all over Mars, we'll have a breathable, breathable atmosphere here in a few hundred years. At least that's what they used to teach us in school. Now, next farther out from Mars is the asteroid belt. And you may say, well, the asteroid belt is not a planet. And it isn't, but at the time I went to school, they were teaching us about some theory that didn't work out, but it did a pretty good job of explaining the spacing of the planets. Uh, if you use the right numbers and the right formula, basically you've got tracks, orbits, and Mercury, uh, Venus, Earth, Mars, all fit in those tracks. One, two, three, four. Now, where five should be is the asteroid belt. Now, the asteroid belt has a couple of pretty big asteroids, uh, not quite big enough to be called a planet, but if they were the only things orbiting the sun in that track, we might have actually called them a planet. And if you take all the asteroids together and put them all together in one big clump, they're still not really big enough to be called a planet. But again, if they were the only things orbiting the sun back in that track, we probably would. So the theory was that since our numbers are working out so well in these tracks, that there should have been a planet there. Should. And so the asteroid belt is either the uh, remnants of a planet that was there that was destroyed, or there just wasn't enough stuff to have it all aggregate come together into a planet. So the asteroid belt or the one or two really big asteroids in there, I think Ceres was the name of one of them, uh, was considered a planet for a while, but we'll just skip over that for now. So next out there is Jupiter, and Jupiter is big. Uh, in fact, if you take away the sun, Jupiter is as big as all the stuff left in the solar system. And uh, Jupiter has a whole bunch of moons, some of which are pretty good sized, and if they were orbiting by themselves, would probably be considered planets. But since they're orbiting around Jupiter, they're moons. Next one out there is Saturn. Uh, Saturn is known mostly for its rings, but it also has a whole bunch of moons. And it turns out Saturn and Jupiter are gas giants, and all gas giants apparently have rings. It's just Saturn has the rings that are brightest and prettiest when viewed from Earth, so that's why we think of Saturn as a ring. And uh, as I was saying with those little tracks, da -da 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 -da, you know, Mars, the asteroid belt, Jupiter, Saturn, all those seem to fall into the tracks. Which is why that track theory that I cannot remember the name of stuck around so long even though it was wrong. So on to planet number seven. Now according to the track theory, out past Saturn a certain distance would be a seventh planet, a planet X, an unknown planet. And looking where the track theory said they should be, they found Uranus, or Uranus. Or if you're a teenager in Mr. Green's seventh grade science class, uh, Uranus. 
as in, hey, chapter 10 is on Uranus. Hey, turn to page 187. There's a good picture of Uranus. Hey, Kelly, I heard you drew a picture of Uranus. Can I see it? And because of that, that's pretty much all I remember about uh, Uranus is that it has a funny name and it was found outside the orbit of Saturn about where the theory said it should be. And uh, there was a song going around when I was a kid about the nine planets. And one of them mentioned that uh, Uranus was built on a funny tilt. And it actually rotated sideways. Uh, Most planets, as they're going around the sun, rotate in roughly the same direction. A little off this way, a little off this way. But Uranus is actually on its side, rotating. And the theories on that was that maybe uh, Uranus actually uh, originated from outside the solar system. You know, it was like, you know, a rogue planet traveling through space and it got caught in the sun's gravitational field. Uh, Another theory was that it used to have like a large moon and they collided and it knocked it off kilter, something like that. So, like I said, the tracks said there should be a planet there and they found Uranus, 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 however you want to say it. Um, But there were some problems with the orbit. The orbit wasn't just quite what it should have been. So they said, ah, there must be another planet out there circling around the sun, uh, you know, pushing and pulling on Uranus to uh, make the orbit a little little weird. So they went out to the next track and they looked and they did not find a planet. So they did some other calculations involving gravity and orbital mechanics and other stuff that I'm not qualified to discuss because I am not a scientist. And eventually, using that, they found Neptune, uh, planet 8. Of course, it was planet X until they found it, and then it became Neptune. And Neptune was way out of the tracks, and it was the first planet they found that didn't match up with those tracks. So they thought, hmm, maybe the track theory isn't quite right. Neptune wasn't, you know, even with Neptune out there and Uranus, there was still, you know, some weirdness the orbits didn't quite match up the way they were supposed to. So they said, ah, there's still another planet X, another planet outside of the orbit of your of Neptune. So they looked where the track said the next planet should be, and it wasn't there. So they said, okay, the track theory is obviously not right. Let's throw it out. We've only been holding on to it a long time because all the numbers lined up right. So they figured out their orbital mechanics, and they figured out, okay, we need this, we need this, we need this. Ah, we've got it. The next planet X, the next planet, unknown planet that we're looking for, is going to be about the size of Earth, and it's going to be way out here in this section of the sky. We've got it all figured out now. And so they looked, and they found a planet out there, another planet X. And because it was so far away from the sun and so cold, they decided to call it Pluto, you know, Lord of the Underworld, because most of these planets are named after Greek or Roman gods or other legends. So now we have nine planets, and this was about when I came in. Uh, This was about the time I was actually learning about planets, is when they said, you know, maybe Pluto is not a planet. Now you say, why? how can it not be a planet? Well, it turned out, you know, originally they thought it was about the size of Earth. Well, after they observed it for a while, they decided, wait a minute, it's maybe a lot smaller than Earth, a whole lot smaller than Earth. Maybe it's not big enough to be called a planet. And this was back in the uh, 1970s, by the way, not the more recent uh, thing in the 2000s. So they said, well, how can we be sure Pluto is a planet? Well, as luck would have it, about that time they discovered that Pluto had a moon. Uh, Charon, I think it's called. And uh, Charon was the uh, guy that pushed the boat on the river Styx and took the, ferried the dead souls from the land of the living to the land of the dead. So, you know, a good companion for Pluto, who was the lord of the underworld. So they said, okay, well, Pluto has a moon. So since it has a moon, it has to be a planet, doesn't it? I mean, you know, there are planets without moons, but pretty much everything that has a moon around it we call a planet. So in the late 70s, they said, yes, definitely, for now and forever, Pluto is a planet. So that's about the time I learned, and that's how I think of Pluto as a planet. That's why I constantly tell people Pluto is a planet. Those astronomers are wrong. All right, fast forward about 30 years. Um, Remember, they originally thought Pluto was about the size of the Earth, and they thought, oh, it's a bit smaller. Then they thought it was a bit smaller than that. 
So it went from about the size of the Earth to about a tenth the size of the Earth to about a hundredth the size of the Earth, I think. And they figured out that uh, its moon, Charon, was actually a lot bigger than they thought it was originally. And that's part of the reason why they thought Pluto was so big for so long. It's because the, the moon near it was you know, reflecting a lot of light to the telescopes. And then they discovered Pluto had a couple of more planets, or a couple of more moons around it. But the real kicker was, once they started really paying attention out there, and the uh, telescopes got better and whatnot, is that they realized that Pluto wasn't the only planet out there. It wasn't the only thing about that big out there. Uh, you go out just a little bit further, there was another uh, planet or something that was a little bit bigger than Pluto, and then there were several other items out there that were a bit smaller, not much, but just a bit smaller. And so if Pluto's a planet, wouldn't those other things be planets? And if we're calling Pluto and those other things planets, well, there's, you know, Ceres and some of those asteroids that are pretty good size. Aren't they planets? So that started a lot of discussion and a lot of things that go way over my head. But at the end of it, they decided that, well, if we're not going to call all these other things planets, then we can't call Pluto a planet. And if it was up to me, I would have said, okay, none of these other things are planets, and we'll call Pluto a special case because it's always been considered a planet. We'll just, you know, leave it as a planet. All these other things aren't planets. They're planetoids, dwarf planets, something. But they said, no, 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 we can't do that. We can't have exceptions. So Pluto is no longer a planet. So I'm like, And that's the saddest puppy dog face I can make because now Pluto is not a planet. And my little, my very eager mother just made us nine what? There's no pizzas because Pluto is not a planet anymore. So my little thing doesn't work anymore. So Pluto is not a planet. Your Uncle Troy is sad. And I'm hoping that they change their mind at some point. And now I've got to go out and I've got to get me a degree in astrophysics or something so that I can be put on that board of people that decide these things and I can vote for it to go back to being a planet. Okay then, that's another example of Uncle Troy answering a question even though he is not qualified even though he is not qualified to answer it. Uh, so if you have any questions you'd like your Uncle Troy to answer, uh, send them in, leave them as a comment down below. And I'll try to answer them in, in the future, even though I am not a doctor, I am not a lawyer, I am not an astronomer, or in any other way uh, qualified to answer your questions. This is Uncle Troy signing out. Please have a good night.